It's a bit too wet to be out harvesting today. So I figure I'll take this time to show you guys how our pits and our grain dryer and our grain bins work. It's pretty quiet this morning. We got the grain dryer shut off because we didn't want it running at night while it was raining. So it's a good time to do this. I'm gonna start at the very beginning and tell you guys that this truck is full of corn. I'm gonna dump it into the pits and show you what happens to it from there. Each of these pits are 500 bushels a piece. That way we can dump 1,000 bushels at a time. They'll each fit 500 out of the truck. A truckload is about 500 bushels. You can see the grain goes in the bottom there, ends up in the bottoms of the augers, and it gets fed up here into the grain leg. While the truck is dumping, we can go ahead and turn on our pit augers. Start the leg up here. Next thing we do is start these augers up. These pit augers will run automatically until these pits are completely empty of corn. Once these pits are empty, the augers sense that there's no load on them and they'll automatically shut down. Once the grain goes up the grain leg, it'll go one to two places. The first place it'll go is down this pipe and into the back of the grain dryer. If the grain dryer is full and this pipe is full, it will overflow into this pipe and come down here into what we call the holding tank or the wet bin. The majority of the corn is going to end up going into the wet bin over here before it gets transferred back into the leg, up to the top, and down into the dryer. So the truck is empty, the pits still have plenty of corn in them, but at this point if we were out harvesting, this truck could take off, head out to the field, and meet the combine or the grain cart back out there because these pits and these augers will automatically handle themselves. Eventually all of the grain in this wet bin needs to come out here and end up going through the grain dryer because we want to store and sell this corn at about 15% moisture. Right now we're taking it out of the field around 25-26% which is way too high to store it safely for any period of time. That's the reason we need to run it through the grain dryer. Now the grain dryer automatically feeds the corn from the top to the bottom and sends it out through the back. I'll show you guys that in a minute. But before I get to that, I need to tell you that there's two sensors at the top of the grain dryer that let the system know when the grain dryer needs more corn. Once those sensors flip over and tell the system that the grain dryer needs more corn, this motor and that motor will automatically kick in to take grain out of the wet tank back into the leg where the priority feed is into the downspout at the top of the leg and over into the grain dryer. Once the corn comes up through the leg and into this downspout and down into the top of the grain dryer here, there's an auger system inside the grain dryer that runs through here that evenly distributes the corn throughout all the columns inside the dryer. Now the corn doesn't actually sit down in the middle of this grain dryer the way a lot of people would think. It actually fills up only inside the walls. The center of this dryer is hollow. You can see here, the walls of this dryer are perforated. They're perforated on the inside and the outside to allow the air, the hot air, to come from the inside and push to the outside through the corn. This specific dryer is what they call a double stack. So it has a top and a bottom system to this dryer. This dryer is actually full right now. So it's full of corn. I'm gonna open the back door and show you guys what's inside. This is actually the center of the dryer. The heat comes from the fans and the burners up there and gets pushed through the center here. The corn is packed inside these walls. Again, these are perforated, so the air is forced to push out through these perforations, come out through the corn, and the steam coming out the side of the dryer that you guys see in my videos is the actual moisture coming out of the kernels. As the corn comes in the top and fills the walls on each side of the dryer, when it gets to the point where it crosses between the top and the bottom, it crisscrosses in here. It mixes, comes down to the bottom. There you can see where I've still got the inside open. And eventually, it slowly makes its way all the way down here to the discharge chute. Once the grain reaches the bottom of the dryer, and it slowly gets rolled and augered out to the discharge chute here, it drops down into what we call the air system. This great big motor and this fan here actually use air pressure blowing through this pipe to grab the grain and push it 
through this air system. Back here is what we call the exchanger. This is where we can switch and go into any different bin on this site by moving where the air pipe is located. Right now, we're dumping into this pipe here. This pipe wraps up, goes to the very top of this bin right here. So this is where all the grain is going into that leaves the back of that dryer the way we currently have it set. The noise you hear back here are the fans. We run those fans on the bins because they push air through the floor, underneath the floor, and it's perforated just like the walls of the dryer, and it pushes air up through the grain to help store better. It also helps the grain dry out a little bit more and cool down after it's left the dryer. Fans are really important for the storage of the grain. If we don't run those, that grain can spoil. What we typically try and do here is run them up until the point where everything freezes hard. Then we run it a few more days just to freeze that corn really, really good. And then our grain actually stays frozen solid for several months throughout the winter. This thing's ready to fire up. What do you say we do it? Now right here, this is the controls for the air system. I'm gonna go, go ahead and turn that on right away. That way this system will automatically kick on once I start emptying this dryer. Inside here, this is our screen that is the main control for the grain dryer. Everything with the grain dryer is controlled from this touch screen. Before I start it up, I should mention that at the front of the dryer, inside here, there are great big centrifugal fans that blow and force the air out and through the corn. There's also a set of burners on the top and the bottom that heat that air up Right now we've got it set for 200 degrees on the bottom and 220 degrees at top. That's the temperature inside that center column where the dryer is hollow. That's the temperature of the air that it's pushing out through the corn. So I've already got my screen set to manual operation. That's where we typically run it. It does have an automatic setting so that you don't have to change much. I can see my moisture sensor is reading really, really high. That's because of the rain. I'm gonna walk back there, drop that moisture sensor, and clean it off because otherwise it takes a couple hours to start reading accurately. So this has automatically turned on and it's gonna run enough corn up there and down into the dryer to make sure that that dryer is 100% full. The next thing I'm gonna do is turn on my fans. You're gonna hear some squealing noises from that. That's the huge fans kicking in with wet belts. So the fans are up and running. They're pushing air through the grain right now. Meanwhile, the sauger back here just finished loading, so the dryer is completely full. The next thing I'm gonna do is turn my heat on. That will kick on the burners and start sending heat through those fans and out through the corn. Right here is my plenum temperatures. I've got those set right now at 200 and 220. So you will see these temperatures start climbing once those burners kick in. These will start climbing really quickly. There we got just a little bit of steam starting to come out the top there. So we know we're starting to build up a little bit of temperature. This is actually as loud as the grain dryer itself gets. The sound that you guys hear, that loud, humming, whiny sound that you guys hear on my videos all the time, is actually this air system and the blower motor pushing the air through the pipes to send the corn to the grain bin. So now that I'm comfortable, I know everything is set where I want it, you can see these plenum temperatures climbing really quickly. I'm gonna go ahead, and turn my unload on. There you can hear the air system kicked on. So that's this motor back here running the air through the pipes. Now I've got my meter roll here set at 0%. That means the bottom of the dryer is not running at all to dump corn into those air pipes. What I usually do is start it slow at about 5%, listen for the corn and go check to make sure that the corn's going where we want it to be going. I don't see any leaks going on back there, that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that meter roll speed up so that that dryer will feed out faster. I know that the corn inside the dryer is actually pretty dry because it spent a little bit extra time in there last time while we were waiting for these plenum temps to cool down. So I'm turning it to 17%. That's fairly quick for the grain that we have in there, but I'm gonna wait and watch this and let this come down. I'm also gonna test some corn right out of the back of the dryer in a minute. 
I'm gonna take this corn and check it manually. It does have moisture sensor on the back of the dryer to tell us what it's coming out at. But that moisture sensor is a computer and oftentimes computers are wrong, just like right now. All right, that corn is coming out right now at around 14% or just over. Plenty dry, so I'm gonna leave it on 17% meter roll speed. I'm gonna come back in about 20 minutes, half an hour, and check it again. These old dull moisture testers, they keep going, they're accurate. Now this system will run automatically as long as everything works the way it's supposed to and nothing slips a belt or plugs an auger or blows an air pipe off. The trucks can keep coming in and out and just automatically dump into those pits, turn the augers on, and that corn will go to where it needs to, either first to the dryer or over to the wet tank. Every time the dryer calls for it, this auger back here will kick on and automatically load grain into the dryer. After that, grain goes in the dryer, slowly makes its way to the bottom into the air system where it's sent out into the grain bin we want it sent to. Now we monitor this thing as often as we possibly can. Uh, throughout the night, Dad and I take turns switching back and forth, usually checking on it every two to three hours throughout the night. The big things we want to look for, number one is to make sure one of those air pipes haven't popped off and put a thousand bushels of corn or more on the ground. So that's number one. Second thing we look at is the moisture. We'll look at this computer. We'll also take a manual sample just to make sure that everything's coming out right because we don't want a half of a grain bin full of something that's too wet, otherwise that grain is gonna rot on us. So if we put it in there too wet, we've gotta get it out right away and resend it back through the system. We definitely don't wanna to have to do that. It's time consuming and expensive. Other things that can go wrong when it's raining, these belts, we've got a ton of belts on everything out here. All these augers are run by belts. Somebody asked about uh, making them chain drive. What would happen if you made them chain drive is when you have a problem, you'd end up wrecking something in the motor instead of the belt. And so the belts are kind of the safest way. Everything is just belt driven. That's really just the way it is and I think that's the safest way to do it. But once in a while you'll get a belt wet and you'll slip that belt, it'll smoke the belt or burn it. Sometimes it'll burn right through it and the belt will come off. You end up with a plugged auger. Uh, it's no fun, it's a battle, but it's one of the things we gotta watch for to make sure everything is running right. If you guys have more questions, go ahead and throw them down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. Recently, a lot of you have noticed that my channel has just completely exploded. Thank you, I appreciate that, it's awesome. Unfortunately, I can't keep up with the sheer amount of comments and emails and Facebook and Instagram messages that are coming in. I do my best to answer what I can. Becky does her best to answer some of them, but we just can't keep up at this point. Don't stop sending them, I appreciate the messages. Thank you to every one of you that have messaged us. We do read all of them, so if we didn't respond to you, I'm sorry, I apologize about that, but we do read the messages. Go ahead and keep sending them. It's too wet today. You can see we're not gonna get any harvesting done today at all, so I thought I'd take the time to make this video while I could. Thanks for watching, guys, and please keep watching.